All right, hello everyone. I am super excited to have Kimmy with me today. She is the founder of Kairos Gym. She is an artist and creator of her own jewelry line, boutique store, whatever you want to say. <laughs> super exciting. Um, so welcome. Thank, thank you. Happy thank to be here. Yes, thank you for spending some time to chat with me today. I was super intrigued because I I know a lot of people locally have discovered you a lot sooner than I did, but uh, the first event that I went to was a holiday event back in November of last year, and I was just blown away. Like I, for some reason, I just thought you were going to be like this old lady or something. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I think it's always. Uh, it's probably why I love it so much. <laughs> Well, my mom just kept talking and talking about you, and I was thinking, I just couldn't quite picture what this was all about. And then, of course, I went to your home, and I saw that you have this home studio, and then you transformed it into this beautiful, like, jewelry gallery, and your house is so fun, and you are just as cute as can be. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, I am a little jealous here. <laughs> I was working a full-time job, which I absolutely just hated. And I was like, man, why can't I just need to find a hidden talent and just turn it into something cool like this. So I thought this would be perfect for all of the teens. And I'm trying to create a resource for that can just get some inspiration from you as an artist. So let's get going. Um, tell us a little bit about you and how you even got into this journey to begin with. Well, actually, um, it has a lot to do with the name of my company, Kairos Gem. Um, that's because, you know, I went to school, um, I got married, I had a kiddo, she's 11 now. Um, and, you know, life kind of was on a fast track and I kind of was mommy and I did cheer coach for a while. And then I wanted to go back to school and I knew I wanted to be in some kind of medical field, but wasn't sure what. So I decided to go into dental assisting, loved it, uh, then went into dental hygiene, which was a very intense, hard program. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, I was spending every day, every waking minute, either taking a test or at my clinics or scheduling patients and being a mom <laughs> in between on those times. And it was two years of really intense uh, work and and it put me to the test for sure. And I, throughout that, I always had made jewelry because I have collected rocks and gems since I was little. My grandparents and great grandparents are rock hounds here in Idaho. Uh, they work here in Idaho, so um, over in Hagerman and whatnot. So I grew up around rocks and gems and I always uh, played with them throughout, especially throughout dental hygiene because we use our hands so much. And it was something I could do in the off hours. It was something, a hobby of mine that I really enjoyed. It kept my hands ambidextrous. And I just was able to do it whenever. Um, I had had a couple of people say, oh, you should sell that. But to me, I just, my brother is an incredible artist. He is, can sketch and draw. And I guess I, my brain always thought that being an artist was more so that direction. Um, and I never considered uh, rocks and gems to be an art form, right? Mm -hmm. So fast forward after two years, I'd taken four of my boards and actually the last board I took, it was a really long exam, about eight hours. Mm -hmm. and I failed it by one point. So that was a real blow to this path that I thought, you know, this was it. This is what I had to do. This is family friendly. And I just thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? So I actually took that moment and thought that that was a good learning lesson for me to kind of go within and, and maybe this was a reason this was happening and this block kept happening. Mm -hmm. And when I looked around, the thing that stood out to me were my rocks and gems. And so I sat, I sat on it for about a month and I, I went ahead and wrote down a business plan that had three months of what I was going to plan on doing. And I had a notebook full and I went to my husband and said, hey, this is my plan. If it doesn't work in three months, I'll go back and take my test. Um, and it's been three years now. So this is my full-time job. I get to work from home. Um, I do galleries from home. I do pop-ups, um, that sort of thing. But it's always, it's just one of those funny things that looking back now, I think I was always meant to do it. And dental hygiene was something that created that, helped form that business aspect of clients and keeping up with people and that interpersonal relationship because I enjoyed that. I think, you know, so much. I enjoy that just as much as 
the art form itself is being able to uh, keep up with my clients. And so I feel like I got to replace mouths with beautiful rocks and gems. And now people love to come see me instead of run away from me. <laughs> I think that's great. I think that's probably a good trade off. Mouths, gems. <laughs> right. uh, but I think the most important thing, uh, what I just wanted to throw in there real quick uh, that I find, I think, really valuable is understanding that uh, failure, you know, so many times is looked upon that, you know, you weren't good enough or you didn't give it your best. But in actuality, it's always a jumping point for us. It's always a time that if it doesn't work and there's these blocks, then we need to just stop for a second and kind of open our eyes and our ears and look around and see maybe those skills can be elsewhere, you know, and and just be open to that idea and know that failure doesn't mean that you weren't good enough. That just wasn't my path, you know. Right. Yeah. And um, I was 40 years old before I figured out I was on the right path and, you know, trying to navigate and figure out something. And that's when I was like, you know what, I can help girls that are just trying to prepare their path and their way to kind of have the tools that I didn't have, which kind of inspired this project. But I appreciate those comments. That's awesome. Great. So tell us a little bit how you actually learn the skill of creating these beautiful pieces of jewelry? Well, that's a very interesting thing. Um, if anyone who knows me uh, knows that I am pretty terrible at reading directions with anything. Uh, I'm very impatient. My dad was the best at reading directions. And I just remember every time as a kid, any present that was open, it was like, I was so excited, but then I had to just wait because dad needed to read all the instructions. And so me, I'm kind of a dive in and a trial by error kind of person. So a lot of things that I learned, I just, uh, you know, I would start having ideas and um, I always like to problem solve that way. So my nickname around the house is Mom Guyver. So because I like to kind of tinker with things and I've always been that way where I kind of mess with stuff and see if that can work. And so I started doing that with the rocks and gems and what's fun about rocks and gems and also can be a challenge is they're all different so i can't ever do anything mass quantity and i can't ever do one specific type of thing to the rocks and gems so for me it's always about just exploring looking at other artists getting inspiration from elsewhere especially um i do i will say that i've gotten better now at if i have if i need kind of that kickstart i'll start to watch the youtube video you know, and kind of get some ideas. And that's what's brilliant about YouTube is there's just an infinite amount of information out there for us to learn from. Um, I'm just so impatient that it's tough for me. So what I like to do is I kind of adapt it to my fitting. So I watch, you know, when I'm getting ready in the mornings, uh, you know, I'll have the video on and I kind of just watch some ideas of a different technique that they're using. And then I apply it myself and see what I can do with that technique with rocks and gems. So it's all about that inspiration and it's all about that love for kind of figuring out puzzle pieces and seeing what works for you and and how you can apply it to whatever craft or whatever art form or whatever you're doing in your life it's a youtube i think is a brilliant platform for that for sure there's so much information out there so it sounds like you've pretty much self-taught yourself how yeah. to make these jewelry pieces and used resources. And you said that your grandparents, they have yep. a, a gem store locally? Um, they don't have a gem store, no, but my uh, grandparents and then my great grandparents that were in Hegerman, they were huge rock hounds. So my entire life, I was, uh, you know, I spent around rocks and gems. In fact, one of my first memories is looking through um, a glass coffee table, and it was my great grandparents, and I must have been four or five, maybe around there. Uh, but one of my very first memories actually is looking through that glass coffee table and it was recessed and had black sand and then they had these beautiful gems in there and I remember just wanting to touch those always. <laughs> oh, it's always been in my life and I guess being younger, I didn't really realize how special all of them were. My grandpa would give me a box and we would go to his best friend Harold Beggs place and he would say, fill up your shoe box. So I had shoe boxes of beautiful rocks and gems that I loved them and everything, but they were under my bed in a box. So yeah. you know, I didn't recognize how beautiful and incredible they were until I was older. 
So you were unique in the fact that you took those gems and turned them into jewelry. Exactly. Yes. I figured it for me, they were so beautiful. And that was kind of that aha moment was uh, going back home when I was older and, and finding all of these and thinking, what a shame these are in a box, you know, or what a shame these are collecting dust. Um, what can I do with these that would make it? And that's kind of where that started spurring from is just, again, finding uh, something that was interesting and tinkering with it and figuring out how to make it personal. So how did you get this business rolling from scratch? Um, what are kind of the behind the scenes um, tasks that have to take place in order to get something like this rolling if there's like a teenager out there who is really inspired by you and what you're doing and is like, you know what, this could be something I could do when I grow up. Right. Uh, that, and you know, I think with anybody that you talk to, a big thing is kind of, again, trial by error and kind of figuring that out. I, I have to say, I think my biggest piece of advice for starting something like this is to have have a schedule have balance um i you know i'm constantly moving that balance and changing that balance with family and and you know especially working from home you you know you get caught up in housework or things like that so it's all about that balance but always having something a schedule you know always knowing that you're going to have a certain start time because especially when you run your own business it can be easy to say i'm going to take today off and i'm going to take tomorrow off and the next day and you have different start times. So what I do is I have a planner um, and every morning, you know, I have my coffee and get my morning started and kind of check where my clients are and kind of check what projects I have going on that week and, um, you know, kind of let that coffee set in. And for me, I like to, you know, light some incense and get my music going and get my lights on. And then pretty soon what happens is I start feeling inspired in my space and and things start just rolling. But balance, uh, scheduling, timers are huge. <laughs> um, that's for a personal uh, place. Other than that, I, am, I think another really important thing is that when you find something that you're passionate about, that drive is will come. Um, and so if you're constantly struggling with that drive to do something, you know, open your eyes because you might be missing you know, what it is that is your passion and what it is that is your drive. Because for me, I, you can ask my family, it's tough for me to stop. <laughs> I, we're on downtime and we're outside. I, you know, I'm walking back to my office and bringing rocks and gems out there because I truly enjoy it. And yeah. I know it's a cliche that it doesn't feel like work if you're doing your passion, if you're enjoying your passion. And that's so true. It's so, so true. Um, any other advice I would have um, would be make sure locally that you can set up a tax ID. Um, make sure that you follow all of you know anything that you need to legally through the government. And that's very easy. You can go online and find any of those answers that you need for whatever it is. Um, and making sure that you do those kind of things because it also helps your business as well in certain circumstances where they can help with wholesale and whatnot like that. So making sure that you understand um, what rules you do have to follow. And then, you know, knowing what it is that's going to push you to get up in the morning and what it is, you know, we luckily you don't have to start right at 8 a.m., you know, or whatever it is. That's the beauty of having your own job and, and working from home. But it comes with those difficulties of the balance. So scheduling, balance, you know, and just making sure that you, you follow everything legally and then just keep producing, just keep going. That's my only advice because if you keep going, you will gain traction no matter what, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just putting one step, one foot in front of the other and just continuing to make progress, no matter what the input is on the outside, just keep going with what you're passionate about mm -hmm. and that success will follow. It will come. That's perfect. So what are your best marketing tools? How did you start to get your name out there? Let people know, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, um, I think what I did is I really searched inside myself and said, what would make me interested in this business? You know, if I was an outsider, what would I love? 
uh, one of the things that I always noticed about rock and gem jewelry was that it was more old lady. I, it didn't it didn't fit my style very much. Um, the other thing was if I did find something that I loved, it was really, really expensive. Yeah. So uh, what I suggest in the beginning is, you know, making something that you would pay for. If you, if you see that value, what would you pay for that? And, and it's, especially in the beginning, it's really about getting your product out there, right? Mm -hmm. And when I first started, I remember thinking to myself, what is it, how am I, you know, how much money am I going to spend for advertising? How much am I going to pay on Instagram or any of these other outlets? How much am I going to spend a month? Mm -hmm. And it was a funny thing because I worried and worried about that in the beginning. And um, I haven't paid for advertising yet. Um, that is because, like I talked about, you continue to just do what you love and show that progress and, mm -hmm. and build that naturally. And that is so important that you build that organically. So my advice, you know, when you're first starting out, if you really want to get your name out there, do something that others are not, um, be willing to, you know, I know that when I started, you know, I, I priced my things fairly, very fairly. And I still do because for me, when somebody wears my piece, that's advertising, right? Yeah. So for me, when I look at it and I go, you know, well, this is what I would pay. And, and sometimes somebody would say, well, I'd pay way more for that. And I go, yeah, but these people, they refer me and they become clients and they, they become friends. And so for me, it's much more about the relationship than the transaction and making sure that people feel that they've got the value worth. And they feel good about what they got. And they don't walk away saying I got ripped off or, you know, just that feeling. So I think that that's really important is just offering something that others wouldn't and taking a deep look and saying, you know, would I pay for this or what would I pay for this? And pricing that fairly because people will feel that and they'll notice that and they'll see that it's genuine rather than feeling like they got something pulled over on. Yeah, perfect. Is there one particular platform in social media that has helped you the most, or is it something that is just ever changing? Um, you know, I love Instagram. For me, with art and because my pieces are very unique, mm -hmm. uh, for me, I love Instagram because I can snap the photo, I can put it up and say, you know, direct message me, let me know if you'd like this. Yeah. Um, and that way, when people see it and it, it makes people come back and kind of keep checking because they might have something pop up that they love, right? So Instagram for me has been the best. I have it linked to my Facebook as well, um, but I have everything come back through my Instagram. So all orders come from my Instagram. And I've had numerous times where I've been uh, starting to build a website and I've, you know, I've made progress on that, but it's funny because I still, I just get too busy with my order, finish my website. So I kind of am just sticking with what works right now. And for me, Instagram works really well. And like I said, I think the big difference is building your Instagram organically um, and not paying for the ads and not because those are empty followers. Those are not people who are actually going to buy. And so I feel that a lot of people get frustrated on Instagram because they buy followers and then they wonder why their product isn't moving. Um, and so building organically, no matter how slow it is, every person that's following you is a real person and somebody that is either interested in what you have or has already bought from you. So I think that that type of platform, just like I talked about the whole being genuine, it, it, you know, I think that's pretty rare. People are looking for a leg up um, always. Um, and so if you come from the heart and you are honest and truthful and, and you just put forth, you know, honesty, then, then that will be reciprocated and people will feel that. And I, I love my Instagram has had a slow and steady grow and it didn't explode to 10,000 followers, but mm -hmm. those followers I have, have kept me in business for three years. So any amount is good. That's wonderful. And has your outreach at this point just been local? And that's probably been enough for you as a, like a single, single woman show. If, if you went online and offered it to everyone in the world, <laughs> right. maybe, maybe you would be too busy. Right. And that's, that's kind of the balance right now that I exactly what you're talking about is where I'm at is with the website. I know that, you know, right now I wear all the hats in this business and my husband helps with shipping because he's a 
a sweetheart, but uh, you know, I send him with the packages. But other than that, it's a one woman show. And so right now, even with my Instagram, I've shipped across the world. And, um, you know, I just sent one off to uh, Switzerland last week. So it's, it's funny because it does outreach that way. But as far as a website, um, yeah, that's something that, you know, I have to be ready for because I will have to have help to be able to manage either that side of it or just help getting supplies or anything like that. So yeah, it definitely right now I'm stocked <laughs> right now. It's, and, and, and that's the thing too, is I always want to make sure that I'm never over pushed because I love my clients and I love my people. And I always want to be able to do rush orders for them and be available, you know, and not just have them putting in orders, but to really help them through each one. You know, it's kind of funny because as I've been talking to other mompreneurs out there and all, most of them so far have been local and they've kind of felt the same way. Like our outreach, there's so many people, even locally, we can only outreach so far right now, but that's right. all we need. And, yeah. you know, a lot of them were like, I would be more than happy to get to a point in my career where I would teach other people to do what I do so that we can help more people out. But you know, there's, there's so much demand and so much need out there that we really don't need to go crazy. It's true. It's true. It's like you, you don't want to wish for that because you want to keep the quality of what you're doing, you know, the same, um, and grow, you know, at the right speed, not too quick. <laughs> exactly. So what is a good, like estimated startup cost for something in this industry? Is it just, I mean, do you go to shows and buy gems and where do you get all of your supplies? So um, as far as supplies go, um, you know, online is a wonderful resource as far as tools. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple different websites um, that I'd be happy to share with you um, for jewelry making things like that. Okay. Um, and it's nice because online you can compare a lot. Sometimes craft stores are really high. Other times they're pretty decent. But online I love because you can see user reviews and really learn about the product before you buy it. Um, as far as gems go, um, something that I have always done with my gems is I've handpicked every single rock that I have. I've, I have a, in this room, my room alone, I pro probably have 2,000 pieces, you know of gems um and because for me since i was a child you know that was part of it was being able to touch them and feel them and i pick the best of every lot rather than getting an entire lot and trying to offload that lot so i'll spend that's part of my job which is awesome is getting to go through bins of different gems and um, i have some locally here that i uh, go to earthlight um, is a wonderful spot to pick up some gems um, and there's some places downtown, there's a couple spots, but my favorite um, is waiting for gem shows to come, mm -hmm. um, going to a gem show because that's, you get, just get such a huge opportunity. And a lot of times the gems that I'm looking for are different than what everybody else is looking for because I'm making jewelry with them. Yeah. So it's, a, it's just a treasure hunt. It's always looking for treasure and finding the best pieces. So. An estimate cost, you know, that's tough. I mean, I build, I've built everything pretty slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically what I've um, done is part of it goes to the account and part of it goes to business expenses. So anything that I make, that gets reinvested into my business. And so I, I really focus on that part um, because I think that's so important and, and you know, and even if, and if money's tight, luckily, you know, I can just put that towards the account, but it's something to just have a separate account and kind of just keep putting things in there and really understand what is it that I can do with a base model right now and, and then continue to grow. Don't get the best thing right off the bat. I've gone through four soldering irons, you know, and I started at a $4 soldering iron and I finally got my, you know, $120 soldering iron, but that took me three years. Yes. And for me, that was a big purchase for me, and it took my my game to the next level. Um, but I would say, you know, if you can save save for some time before you really start, 
so that when you start that you kind of know the things like I said the base minimum of kind of what you need tools get online gems wait till you've got your tools because you'll go nuts with gems or whatever it is that you're getting mm -hmm. um, and just make sure that you can get your work done comfortably and start there and then as you grow like I said just keep every piece you say you sell take a part of that and put it into a fund to for your business that's so smart that's so smart i love that advice so what are your most favorite parts of this business and what are kind of the harder not so fun parts oh man okay so i i'll start with the harder uh the harder parts honestly is uh just having enough time in the day yeah uh hard part is the balance i think that is a a constant thing that we're always figuring out and um and not being able to to do more you know? yeah. sometimes it's hard like making stuff and then you feel you're excited because of how many orders you have but it's also can be daunting sometimes when it's just you and it's up to you so um i i think the hard part is yeah it's time time is tough and I'd say the only other hard part is ever feeling like you, you didn't give your best, you know, and I, my suggestion for that is if you ever feel rushed on time, um, it used to get to me a lot when I first started, but I, if I gave a deadline and I was approaching that deadline and I was worried that I wasn't going to hit it, that I would push myself too hard to make sure to hit that deadline. And so now I communicate, you know, communication is key. So I think it, back in the day, the hard part was always trying to get those deadlines finished. And, but the solve, the way to solve that is just being able to communicate with your client and letting, they know that you're a one woman show. And so mm -hmm. they, you know, with who, if you build your business the right way, they'll stick with that, you know, they'll wait. And so I think just always taking care of yourself, making sure your family's first in all the decisions you make and, and uh, bringing them in on everything. Um, as far as what I love, oh my goodness, everything. <laughs> I love the freedom. I love being able to stare at beautiful things and having a different challenge because monotony for me is really hard. So I like the challenge, um, of figuring different things out. And I like being able to be around my family, um, while I do it. They know there are certain times that I, you know, need to be very focused, but for the most part, my door is wide open and they can come in as they please. And I just really love that because I feel I would be missing out on so much if I wasn't here. Um, and my very favorite um, as of this last year, I think, has been the custom orders. I've, I never knew that was something that made me very nervous in the beginning, but now being here and after I started doing them, it was something that I truly, truly loved because I felt that I got to make this personal touch on something that they wanted and being able to do whatever I would like artistically, having my clients say, you know what, I'm going to give you this, do what you want with it. That is such a huge, exciting compliment to me and makes me giddy and makes me work even harder on their piece because I know that uh, they trust me. And so I would have to say this last year, my favorite part is, is being able to do custom orders and being able to fulfill, you know, bridal orders and wedding rings. Cause that, you know, you just realize that is so special, you know, and, and I, it's a weird thing when somebody buys something from you that you made, uh, that's still a strange thing that somebody pays me money. Uh, because it's something I love. And so it's always shocking to me because I would give it away if I could. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think that's the true beauty of, of having a job that you really enjoy is yeah. being shocked that you are making a difference and it doesn't feel like it's painstaking and it is easy, and fun and always exciting. And that drive is constantly there. So I have one last question for you. Yeah. Um, as an artist and a jewelry maker, like jewelry is pretty popular for women. So I can see how that would kind of be an easier focus to get moving. So what about other artists? Do you think there's a space for them, especially as, as things are changing in the e-commerce world? 
is there a space for other artists to really pursue this as like their main gig? Or do you think, cause I mean, as a parent, right. we have a tendency to be like, Oh, that's so great that you're a wonderful drawer. That's a great hobby. But right. why don't you go to college? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Oh, yeah. right. totally. So what are your thoughts on that now that you're immersed in it and you're being successful and you've made this work? What advice would you give? You know, I think it's interesting because, you know, the way we were raised was, you know, you go to high school, you graduate high school, you go to college, right. you graduate college, you get a job because of your college degree. Right. Uh, and times are so different now. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. And I find my own ideas of college and, uh, you know, a specialty education. I find I, I struggle with it now because I, you know, I did that. I went to what was considered a private school and still paying those loans right now for a job that I, for a specialty skill that I, you know, I do use every day because of my hands, but I, I'm not doing the skill that I was trained for. Um, and for me, you know, and that's, that's tough. That's like, oh, and I, I joke that, you know, dental hygiene was actually just my business school because of how hard it was. But as far as, um, nowadays, especially, I think it's really important because there is so much space. I think that especially virtually and being able to be online, it has created the most magnificent area for people, anyone to get started, anyone to at least give it a shot. Because for me, I don't have to pay to be talking to you online. I don't have to pay for my Instagram. That's free right there. Mm -hmm. So cost for that, instead of having a storefront, you know, I don't have to have a credit card machine. I have Venmo and the cash app and Apple pay. Um, so I can be paid virtually and ship things out. I think especially for artists, um, now is, is such a wonderful time because I guess at the end of it, you're not really losing anything if it doesn't work. Right. It's not like you bought a storefront and you bought all this product and you spent all this money on advertising. Uh, you know, if it doesn't work online, then you learned something, you know, yeah. and you can apply it elsewhere. So I think, I think especially now, I think as any kind of artist um, has more of an ability to get their work out there and more people are looking for that and more people are looking for that special touch rather than being mass produced um, and that makes a huge difference. Um, and so being able to photograph from home, you know, you don't need a big fancy studio. You don't have to hire people, uh, especially with art. It is already such a solo activity that, you know, you can do it all just by yourself. And so I, I say, go for it. I say, I strongly encourage it. I definitely think there's a space for that. Um, and you know, you might as well try. Yeah. And you might as well try when you're young too. And all of these interviews that I've had with all of these amazing women, they all went to college, but none of them, well, I won't say any of them because there are some fabulous, very specific healthcare industry jobs where right. people do love and connect and it's an awesome experience. I myself do have, I have a master's degree. Have I used that degree? No. Am I still paying for it? Yes. And I think... Right. It'd be different if education was free, right? College is free. Whole yes. So that's making me rethink everything too. As I talk to all these women that have gone out there and have basically have done this to just put their families first, because that's what's so important to them. And then they found something that they're passionate about and moving forward with. But I'm like, dang, every single one of these have a degree and they, and it really hasn't done them any good. Granted no. though, that it teaches you to work hard. There's so many wonderful things, but, but is it worth the price tag? If I could have taken 65,000 and just invested that in my business rather than student loans, you bet I would have, you know, <laughs> so the thing is like, I wasn't ready for that. And it, I always joke, like sometimes I feel like I needed to go through it. And that's the struggle. That's like where I'm at. It's like, I kind of didn't needed that kick in the butt. Um, to push myself as hard as I do now, but I, at the same time, like I, even I think about our daughter and I think about, uh, you know, having her explore for a year before going to college, you know, and I've, I remember when I was younger, I never would have thought of that. It would have been college immediately after high school. 
you know, because that was kind of what, how we were raised and you don't get a good job unless you go to college. Yeah. And now the world is so different and you can be a business, you can be a business woman or man anywhere and at any time. So yeah, I think it, like you said, it's a, it's a funny balance in your head trying to figure out, but I would say if I could go back, I would definitely just invest in my business. You know, you would like be a bazillionaire. Right. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> Gem money towards my student loan. <laughs> but it's okay because it we all go through all of these different experiences and they're meant for us and they yeah. make us who we are. So yeah. I guess you and I being a little bit older can just appreciate those. Um, but having teenage daughters, it, it really pushes me to think, what are our options and totally. helping them find something that they can be passionate about. And I really do. I know we hear a lot too, like, you know, that's just, that's not true. Most people hate their jobs and you just go to work and you have to do it. Yeah. There are, I'm finding so many people that really are passionate about their jobs and they're doing well and they love it. And that's exciting for me. And that's an exciting thing to share with my daughters and hopefully we can share with the world. Exactly. <laughs> so, thank you, you so much. Up. Hey, thank you so much. For your time today. I appreciate all of this. This is so wonderful, so exciting. Um, appreciate all you're doing for our community and congratulations on being so successful. Hey, you too. Thank you so much for having me. And I loved being on this. So anytime you want to chat, just let me know. Okay, sounds perfect. Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.